this is a strength of materials problem and we have a certain state of strain given and we can see the information right here they tell us that uh, this is measured on the surface of a tin plate and we also know that on the surface of this plate we do not have any stress and they tell us uh, nu which is poison, uh, will be useful for Poisson's ratio which is one third now from this information we can go ahead and draw up our state of strain our little square here x direction y direction and all our arrows that show the information that we have right here now the first thing that we need to understand here is that when they tell us that the surface of this plate is unstressed that means that we do not have any stress in the z direction for us here that would mean like perpendicular to the table or to this paper now we could write it down right here so stress in the z direction equals zero but at the same time we need to know that strain in the z direction will not be necessarily zero for example if this rubber would be a sponge or something very soft it would be very easy to see if we stretch it this way and this way that would mean that it's uh, thickness in the z direction would definitely change and that's what this is it changes in the z direction so we have a strain in the z direction now since we're gonna be doing calculations with more circle the very first thing i like to do is take care of our shear strain which is 480 but when we're gonna be working in more circle we're gonna need half of this so therefore I always like to divide it right away by 2 and get 240 microns so whenever I'm starting to draw the more circle I will not forget it all right here we have my axis which is drawn for more circle for strain here we have epsilon and here we have the shearing strain divided by 2 as we know this is how we need to draw our more circle for strain these two little arrows show us how we're gonna transfer our state of strain to more circle now the first information in the x direction the normal strain is negative and it's negative 60 so we're gonna come to this axis and we're gonna mark 260 for us negative 260 I'm not gonna do this to scale so just really just roughly so we can see what's happening and next step let's go to the y direction our y direction says negative 60 now negative 60 would be this is 0 so it would be somewhere closer so let's call this negative 60 there you go we have our normal strains marked on our more circle now we need to work with our shearing strain 240 is the number that we work with not 480 we're gonna take this information from the state of strain and let's take a look at it on the x side our shearing strain is pointing this way so it will rotate this cube this way so we're gonna come to more circle and we're gonna put it either up or down in order to match our arrows so to match this one up here as we can see it would clash with this arrow so that's not good let's see down here down here it matches to rotate it this way so therefore we're gonna come downward so 260 from the x side coming downwards 240 let's say this will be negative 240 okay so right here this is my x location now let's do the same for the y location for the y side it's the arrow would be rotating this way this cube would be rotated this way now if we come to more circle let's try to match the rotation 
which matches with this one. So that means from this point, we would need to come upwards. So 240 upwards, let's say somewhere here, same as it was there, down there, the distance. So up here, up here, there you go. This is my Y. There you go. Now we found our two positions. The next step what we do is we're going to connect these two. So there we have it, the X and the Y. And where this crosses, that's our epsilon average. And that's the next step that we're going to calculate. But first I'm going to just roughly draw in the circle that this would uh, create. So let's see, it would go something like this. Obviously it's going to be a hideous looking circle, but we get the message. It's more circle, so it needs to be a circle. So it's going to go something like this. So there you go. There's a rough sketch of our Morse circle with our X and Y location. That's our initial state of strain. Now they are asking us to find the orientation and the magnitude of the principal strains. Now these two will be at the tip right here and over here. So these are the two points that we need to calculate. We need to see the orientation, basically the degree, which would be this one, and its magnitude, their magnitude. The next step, I want to find epsilon average. That's right here. Epsilon average, normal strain average will be this plus this divided by 2 and this is going to give us a nice value for this location which is negative 160 and these are all microns. That's what we're working with. So we found our average and now we're gonna rely on trigonometry and this is our uh, triangle that we're gonna be working with right here i colored it so we can see it a little bit better now i'm gonna take this triangle i'm gonna redraw it over here just for sake of uh, less stuff to confuse us so this triangle is the same as this triangle it's a right triangle the bottom right here, we can see negative 60 to 160. That's going to be a length of 100. And this one up here, we know it's 240. So I put 240. This will be my hypotenuse, and my R, and my R. And we also know that when we are working in Morse circle, the angle is not theta, but it's 2 theta. So therefore, this is my 2 theta angle. To find R, we simply uh, do this calculation right here. Equals square root 100 squared plus 240 squared. And there's our value for R. Now, this will be very important to help us find uh, the theta and also the magnitudes. Okay, first up, theta. 2 theta, how can we find angle in a right triangle. All we're going to do is rely on inverse tangent. So 2 theta equals inverse tangent of 240 over 100. There's our angle. And to get theta, we simply divide it by 2. Theta equals 33.67. We also need to remember that y will have to rotate clockwise down here to this new location. And we can call these A and B. Let's call this one A. Let's call this one B. So at A location, A location is 33.67 degrees clockwise from our origin, original state of stress. State of strain, excuse me. Now in order to find our magnitudes for point A, we simply take sigma average plus R and that's going to take us to point A. Therefore, sigma A equals negative 160 plus 260. The value that we find right here, that's going to give us a value for sigma at point A, which is our 
one of our principal strains to be 100 microns. Now to find strain at point B, we're going to have to go the other direction. So we're going to take sigma average minus the R that we found, and that's going to help us come to our sigma at point B, which is negative 420 microns. Uh, the next step, they want us to know the maximum in-plane shearing strain. In-plane for us is XY, so we need to find the maximum shearing strain, which would be up here, right, at the peak from this direction, right here. And the distance from here to up here would be this R, the same R that we already found right here. So therefore, shearing strain is 260 microns. But let's pay attention to how is our Mohr circle set up. It's shear divided by 2. Therefore, when we calculate our shearing strain, we need to remember this. So shearing strain in the xy divided by 2 equals 260. So therefore, from here, it's easy to calculate. Just simply multiply by 2. So our in-plane shearing strain will be 520 microns. The next question, they want us to find the maximum shearing strain, which is different than the maximum in-plane shearing strain. This is in-plane, which means we're just working with x and y direction. Now they want us to find the maximum shearing strain overall. So that means not necessarily just in the xy plane. For this step, we're going to be relying on Poisson's ratio. And from these formulas that we can remember, we can develop the next formula, which is right here. Epsilon or normal strain in the z direction equals negative nu over 1 minus nu in parentheses epsilon in x plus epsilon in y. After plugging in, we are able to find our strain in the z direction, which is 160 microns. Now we're going to go ahead and mark this location on our Mohr circle. Now this is a positive 160, so that would come somewhere, let's see, maybe here. So 160 microns. Now that would mean that we would have more circles to draw. We have one circle that we can draw from here. And we have one circle that would come from here. I'm going to try to make some kind of a nice circle that comes from here. OK, so we have our original circle. We have a smaller one right here, and we have a big one that goes from B all the way to 160 and up and down. So excuse my circle, but that's what it would should look like. Now, just like uh, we had in our original circle, the shearing strain was the radius of the circle. Same way now the maximum shearing strain in our new situation will be the radius of this large circle, the one that comes from B all the way out here. So how are we going to find that? We're going to take half of the distance from 160 to the strain that was at B, which we found it to be negative 420. So simply the distance divided by half. Again, let's remember the shearing strain in more circle divided by 2. And we're going to set this one equal to this one. And from here, we can simply uh, calculate our maximum shearing strain, which will be in the XZ plane, to be 580 microns. 